We are in Matthew chapter 12, going our back and forth between 11 and 12. <clears throat> and this is the next piece of the puzzle. We've talked about judgment, we've talked about decision. Now we're going to talk about what happens when people refuse to make the decision or walk in the place of continual indecision. Paired with 1 Kings 18, where Elijah said, Elijah, excuse me, said, how long will you halt between two opinions? If Baal is if Baal is God, serve him. If the Lord is God, serve him. Elijah's name means God is the Lord. So, it says here, <clears throat> verse 43 of chapter 12. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through the waterless places. This is Jesus continuing onward about the judgment of of this generation, the evil and the adulterous generation. As for miraculous sign, I'm going to read this in context because I think it actually makes sense. And the scribes and Pharisees answered him, saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days and nights in the belly of the great fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented the preaching of Jonah. And behold, someone, something greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came to the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, something greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, he's continuing onward. He is not stopping, even though the translators like to put in their little hands and verse numbers and paragraph numbers saying, this is a new place. Uh-uh. Same conversation. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, this unclean spirit that is trying to incite you to beg me for a miracle sign and wonder so that you can accuse me, when really your motive is spirit of Antichrist, you can tear me apart. It passes through waterless places, places without water. Which definitely implies not under the earth, because it's very clear there are waters under the earth. Correct. Drink your water. Ask Father to continually flush you out so that there are no demons taking up residence on your kidneys and adrenals, creating havoc, spiritually and physically. Correct. Seeking rest, but finds none. Then it says, I'll return to my house from which I came. And when it finds, it finds the house empty. It finds the house swept. And it finds the house put into order. And no one's guarding it. No one's taking care of, tending the lawn, the yard. Uh-uh. Stop the looking rooms. at your brother and smiling and laughing. Thank you. The kitchens, the bathrooms, you're alive. And that correction just went live. And it's put into order. And nobody's guarding it. It's empty. It's not full. No Holy Spirit to protect. Maybe demonic guards to protect, but not Holy Spirit to protect. And it's swept. The floors have been cleaned up. And it's put into order. The bathrooms, the bedrooms, the kitchens, the bookshelves. The dog hair, the dogs have been walked and taken care of. Then it goes, and I like the way the King Jimmy says it. It goes and bring with it other seven spirits more vile than itself, more evil than itself. And they enter and take sojourn there? No, they enter and dwell there. They make their habitation there and they plant roots there. Now the roots grow a structure and now the structure grows a stronghold. Uh, and the last state of that person is worse than the first, so it will so also will it be with this evil generation. And they'll take captive the seven portions of your spirit or whatever else, or they'll do all kinds of nasty damage to you, to your heart, to your mind, to your range, your kidneys and adrenals. And it's an unclean spirit. In other words, it is a spirit that is not yours. It defiles you because it makes you more than one essence. God wants your essence to be uniquely yours. He's zealous for this point. You should be too. Singleness of essence. 
that is the illustration of not planting a field with two types of crops, not having a garment that's made of two types of material. There's a wholeness and a singleness. The issue wasn't, oh, can't have the fabrics because the nature of the fabrics. The issue is singleness of fabric. How long you halt between two opinions. I'm going to take this and I'm going to take this, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. That's good for a recipe and for fragrance and for cooking and for taking care of somebody to provide them with a good flavor and a good meal or whatever the case. But when it comes to <clears throat> what you're handing somebody materially in the spirit, when you bring sacrifice to the Lord, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Fragrance offerings, the, the food offerings with the incense, yes. But even there, there is removal of the leavening, as we remember during Pesach, when we suffered without leaven and all the things that had leaven. Singleness of heart. Hand it over to the Lord. If you don't take the singleness of heart, then that unclean spirit sees a place to further defile you because you're already defiled. You've related to defiled ground because you've got two essences, two philosophies, and two mentalities, or more than one, two or more. I can't decide between this or that, this or that. You can't decide. It'll help you not decide even more. Do you have any thoughts, dear? And if you've got something that doesn't exactly dovetail, but it's something you feel like you need to say because there's another <coughs> thing that you want to bring out, please, let her rip. Yeah, I don't think I do today, but um, thank you for that, because sometimes I do, and I just stay quiet. So, okay, cool. Okay. I'll return to my house. It was already given the title deed, or at least, you know, it's, it's put the mortgage payment down. It's made the first payment, first, last, and security deposit. Never mind, I'm doing something. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I'm glad I triggered that. God, I just kept moving because now she's got something. I, so, so, I think what I'd, I'd, I'd encourage each of you, and you, um, to be mindful of is... You know, do you have a sense that there's another essence inside? You know, do you do you have a sense that there's something inside that doesn't belong? Because you know, obviously we are spirit, soul, and body, but it, we don't want anything else operating inside of us except our spirit, soul, body, and who? God, Who's Jesus, and Holy Spirit. Right. So, um, you know, so Holy Spirit who came in us about salvation. So, um, if there is another essence being critter of any kind inside, that's that's not good. That gets us out of alignment with God, and it um, and it and it and it you know obviously negatively impacts us. So, if you ever get a sense that there's something else going on, or you're hearing a different voice, or you're feeling something else that's off, please have that conversation with us. So that we can work together and bring freedom, you know, um, because that's that's a that's a good thing, um, you know. And there are other there are other things that could be going on. Yes, know? there are. Um, but the it, either way, it gives us an opportunity to partner together, you know, and and to walk in some discernment and you know bring some healing. So it is something to be mindful of. Um, I remember I was I was working with an important child in my life one time, and you know, just very arbitrarily said, "Is there somebody else inside of there, inside of there besides you?" And the, she said, "Yeah, as a matter of fact, there is." And blah blah blah. And, and we and it was just a very natural thing, and you know, it was a kind of a, a new thing that we were discussing, and I kind of threw it out there, and and she didn't even hesitate. Oh well, yeah, and I was like, okay, because um, it was fairly new to me in some of that, some of the, some of that regard. And so, I, I suspect if you're, you know, aware, let's let's deal with it. So, okay, that was what I had. There you go. 
So, gang, yo guys online, y'all got that. And there is something that you know you need to get rid of and you don't have somebody that you can work with to help deal with it or to work through the process, regardless of what it is. It could be an unclean spirit, it could be a demonic spirit, it could be some sort of a division with your own soul apart, a fragment, whatever the case, a little protector or guard, and you need somebody to chit chat with, we are available. Um, we want to make sure that y'all are taken care of and that our audience is taken care of as much as possible and we're available for ministry, Skype ministry, whatever the case, Facebook phone call, email, whatever. We want you to get in touch with us and to connect with us. Um, because this is going out on YouTube, it's tied up with Google, which means I believe my email address is out there already. So please feel free to get in touch with me. And my wife will see it too when you email on this on um, on my email account. It's theblacksmithshammer91 at gmail.com if you do not have it. Again, that's theblacksmithshammer91 at gmail.com. We love you guys. We want you safe and taken care of. And we want your essence to be whole and complete, lacking nothing. In accordance with James 1. We love you guys. And from us here at the gathering at Beersheba, we bless you. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, be blessed.